hundreds of Americans could be leaving Gaza today. According to this new deal with Hamas, they have been trapped inside the war zone for weeks. As Israel continues its unrelenting air and ground assault on Gaza, you are looking at the devastation from a second airstrike in two days on Gaza's largest refugee camp. The IDF says it was targeting Hamas's command center there, but the United Nations Human Rights Office is now warning the high number of civilian casualties from the strikes on the densely populated Jabila camp could amount to a war crime. On the ground, the Israeli military says Hamas's defensive lines are collapsing and militants are retreating into central Gaza. This is the latest video from the IDF of Israeli tanks and soldiers advancing as bombs rain down. And President Biden is now saying he supports a humanitarian pause in the war to save hostages who are still in Gaza. Those hostages, of course, include Americans. At a campaign fundraiser last night, a protester, you can see some of it here, interrupted the president calling for a ceasefire. According to the reporters in the room, he responded, quote, I think we need a pause. A pause means give time to get the prisoners out. We have live coverage all morning. Priscilla Alvarez is live for us at the White House. Let's start with Rafael Romo in Tel Aviv. Rafael, I want to start with the Rafa border crossing. There's the expectation with U.S. officials that more Americans will be getting out today. What's the latest in terms of people getting across that border? Hi, Phil Poppy. Good morning. The expectation is that more Americans indeed are uh, and more foreigners in general will be able to pass through a U.S. State Department spokesman confirmed Wednesday that uh, an initial group of foreign nationals, including U.S. citizens, had departed Gaza and had made it into Egypt, although uh, he declined to give specifics on the numbers of U.S. citizens who were able to to leave Gaza, citing operational security concerns. He did say, though, that more Americans would be able to leave today and in the next days and that the State Department had communicated directly with American citizens in Gaza so that uh, they would be ready to go. Uh, there was uh, also confirmation from President Biden himself. He wrote Wednesday on X that the U.S. had secured a safe passage for wounded Palestinians and for foreign nationals to exit Gaza. And we're expecting uh, some American citizens to exit right away with more departing over the next coming days. How many Americans were stuck in Gaza, you may ask? Well, at a Senate Appropriations Committee hearing, Secretary of State Blinken said there were approximately 400 plus their families, about a thousand people in total. He also said that there are about 5,000 other third country nationals in Gaza who want to get out as well. Poppy, Phil? There has been a second strike, uh, Rafael, since yesterday morning, since we were on with you last, uh, on that refugee camp by Israel. How are they explaining it? How are they defending it, given they said the first strike took out the Hamas target they were going after? Yeah, that's right. So uh, an Israel Defense Forces uh, commander uh, last night uh, say that uh, the problem here is what they've been facing all along. The problem is that uh, Hamas is embedded in civilian communities, uh, building their command centers, their infrastructure behind schools, hospitals, and other uh, civic centers. And it is very difficult to be able to target the commanders and the operatives uh, without any any uh, casualties. They, they, he said that they're trying their best not to go, uh, not to harm any civilians, so that they they do not intend to um, to uh, to injure any civilians, but it is a reality that they're facing in the ground. Uh, they also reiterated what they said a couple of weeks ago, that they had asked the civilian population to leave those combat zones in the north and go south. But again, uh, what we're hearing from relief workers and doctors in the north is that many of these people cannot leave. Uh, many of them are sick, are being treated in hospitals. Uh, we are talking about families with young children. It is just impossible for them to get through. And then again, uh, there is really no safe place in Gaza at this point, Poppy and Phil. Rafael Bromo, thank you for the reporting. Let's go down to Priscilla Alvarez at the White House. Priscilla, let, let's show that video from the moment at this fundraiser last night in Minnesota when a protester who identified herself as Rabbi Jessica Rosenberg interrupted President Biden and called for a ceasefire. Watch. Mr. President, if oh you care God. about Jewish people as a rabbi, I need you to call for a ceasefire right now. Now, 
it, what's interesting is the president, even though she was being shushed and told to leave, he did actually stand and answer a couple of her questions. The president said he understood the emotion. He called for a humanitarian pause, but Priscilla, he was careful not to say ceasefire. When you look at what he said, what does he mean here? Well, in this moment, really captured the delicate nature of the conflict and the heightened emotions that this White House is trying to navigate. So the president did acknowledge the protesters' remarks there about a ceasefire, saying, quote, I think we need a pause. A pause means give time to get the prisoners out. That referring to the hostages held by Hamas. So the president really extending what U.S. officials have already said, which is that they would like to see Israel uh, engage in a humanitarian pause to get aid into Gaza and also to get these how, these hostages out of Gaza. But they have always been very, very careful about using the term ceasefire, saying ceasefire, and even uh, implying at all that they are telling Israel what to do and how to conduct its military operations. So what President Biden said last night was really an extension of what we have been hearing from U.S. officials. But again, it underscores how politically difficult this is for the president, that happening at a campaign fundraiser in Minneapolis. And also the president reminding the crowd that this is a complicated conflict, that Hamas is a terrorist organization, uh, and also noting that he is the guy that got aid into Gaza. So making quite a few points there. One, that this is all very fast developing and ongoing, but also that he is the person to talk to these leaders and try to arrange for aid to get into Gaza and also work to get those hostages out of Gaza. But again, Phil, all of this just underscoring again how complicated and difficult it is as this White House proceeds. Priscilla Alvarez, thank you very much for the reporting.